<laughs> Good morning. <laughs> so, an optimist and a pessimist are arguing about philosophy and their outlook on life. And the optimist, really with great passion, declares, look, this is the best of all possible worlds. To which the pessimist replies, my point exactly. <laughs> this is the best. That's pretty sad if you ask me. Who do you think is having a better experience of life? We don't have to answer that, right? We know. <laughs> I'm looking at this idea today of what you focus on. Now, all you students of metaphysics, do you know the word that comes after that? What you focus on? Increases. Increases. Yes, it does, or expands. In Science of Mind, what we teach and reiterate over and over again is that your consciousness, your mind, is the most creative instrument that you possess. You know, that your thoughts are creative. So what you think, how you perceive life, yourself, things in the world, what you focus on impacts your life directly. If you're seeing best versus best, you're having two entirely different experiences. And what we teach is that God's nature is fully and equally present in each of us. It's everywhere, fully and equally present throughout the universe. But part of its nature that we are imbued with is free will. So we've been left free to discover that nature of infinite goodness that lies at the center of our being. And the more we sense it, the more we have a sense of this pure love, this joy, this intelligence, this goodness that lives in us, that's in everything, the more we're open to calling it forth and experiencing it and expressing it in our lives. And if we can have that sense, even when it's not fully expressed, because we do teach, you know, because we're free to discover that nature where we don't recognize it, where we don't feel it, we can actually use that power in ways that are destructive temporarily, that can hurt us, hurt others. But if we sense it as a potential that underlies everything, some good that is greater than what's happening here on this plane of existence, then we're much more open to solutions, to correcting errors, to making good of ne negative situations. And the truth is, and what I really want us to remember today, is that at any given time, no matter what's going on in our lives, there's so much more good present in our lives. There's so much of that infinite potential that's actually being realized and expressed and that we can continue to draw upon. But if we focus on the negative, if we focus on what we don't like that's going on, we lose sight of that greater good, and we experience negativity. And I think we all get this, right? On some level, we get this. So why is there this tendency for us to still focus on what's wrong versus how much is right? And I think I'm actually going to offer <laughs> a response to that. I think that it's because so much of that good, we're so hardwired, everything in life is so hardwired for good, it just shows up in so many ways, so naturally. You know, it just flows through us in ways that we don't even have to think about, that we take it for granted. We just take it for granted. You know, there's a pianist I heard about who to play a recital, I believe it was at Carnegie Hall. It was some, some big venue, right? And she just played magnificently. It was a complicated piece, but at one point she hit a bad note. She said that note haunted her for days. That one note haunted her for days. And at one point, she finally realized, but what about the thousands of other notes that I hit perfectly? 
don't we do this in our own lives? I mean, we're walking around, so many people are just walking by us, smiling, greeting us, and all that. But what about that one person that gave us a funny look? What was that about? Yeah. So many of our relationships are just unfolding nicely, naturally, effortlessly. But our attention is on that one, that person, that what is wrong with the way that guy keeps wanting to argue with me and not agree with my opinions, and what's up with that? So many areas of our lives are just unfolding perfectly. But we're maybe having a financial challenge a relationship issue, something going on in our career, something about our health. Where's our attention? Is it at all, oh, but life is so good. There's just this one little thing. You know, when we focus on the negative, the anomalies, what we're doing is increasing, expanding the negative impact that they have on our lives versus if we could look at things from the point of view of how much good there is to move through the problem, to affect the solution, to create the greater good. You know, it's not, it's not at all that we don't want to look at the issues or admit to the challenges. We don't need to be inauthentic and just pretend everything's perfect when it's not. But it's so much easier to look at a problem from the perspective of how much good there is in and around us to deal with it. You know, like the pianist, when she realized, OK, I played so many notes perfectly, what happened there? Let me just take a look at what happened there so I don't repeat that error. But coming from the place of, I know I got this, makes it a lot easier to deal with the issue. Now, if it isn't bad enough that we have this tendency to just focus on the things that aren't going the way we want them to in our lives, have you noticed how we have a tendency also to create scenarios of all the things that might happen to us that we absolutely do not want to see happen to us. Oh my gosh, what if? My, I think we can be so creative in our heads it would make some of the worst horror movies put out by Hollywood look like a Disney film, you know? And one of my favorite true stories from my family about this, uh, it was a story of when my Aunt Vera decided later in life to learn to drive uh, because you know, they, she had always been near public transportation, but then when she and my Uncle Jim moved out to the countryside of New Jersey, she thought, oh, I'm going to feel really stranded out here. So she started learning to drive. She took lessons. My Uncle Jim, when he was off work, he would take her out for practice and got to the point that she felt comfortable enough to get on the two-lane highway. And they went at a time where it was pretty empty. And so they got out on the highway, and they were driving along. And it was a beautiful day, and there were these cows out in the pasture. And Aunt Vera is just driving along. And all of a sudden, Uncle Jim said, she started saying, the cow. And he's going, the cow? Yeah, there are lots of cows out there. The fish goes, the cow. The cow, the cow, the cow. And all of a sudden, she turned the steering wheel. So she started heading out into the field, straight for a cow, going, the cow, the cow, the cow, the cow. <laughs> and Uncle Jim just managed to grab the wheel just in time to swerve so that they didn't hit a cow. And apparently, she just had this thought of, you know, what if I were to veer off or something and hit a cow? and fixated on it, so she actually did it, <laughs> or almost did. Again, how much of the time is life just going just right, but we're going, the mortgage, the mortgage, you know, <laughs> the argument, the argument I'm going to have, the this, the that. And ironically, have you ever noticed how the vast majority of things that you really, really worry about, those doomsday scenarios, you conjure up never really happen. They never do. And that 
that might seem contrary to our philosophy that our thoughts are creative, but in fact, it really isn't. See, the, the truth is that even though this part of us is worrying, there's this part of us that's oriented toward good, the greater good of God, that's moving us to look at the ways to open up to the ways that we can prevent the negative thing from happening and have a positive experience. However, even though we didn't create the absolute worst case scenario for ourselves, every thought does create a response. So while we were thinking of those negative scenarios, what was happening? We were having emotional responses, we were having physiological responses in our bodies that we know are not healthy. You know, when we have negative thoughts, they produce negative feelings and ne negative physiological responses. Conversely, they did a study one time of a group of people watching uh, a documentary on Mother Teresa and watching her out on the streets helping you know, the people of Calcutta and seeing that beautiful exchange of love and caring they monitored their body responses, and of course they felt moved, but their bodies were actually producing chemicals that are healing, that help to heal the body. And again, I think we understand this. So why is it so hard to give up worrying? And my thought on that is that because there's this part of us that is always pushing to show us the way to not have the negative experience, to actually have a positive experience, and it is the greater power. But we spent time worrying. When things come out okay, I think we have this idea that, oh, because I worried about it, I, I avoided it happening. I do. I think on a deep level, we think that our worrying is what helped us out. If we had more of a sense, though, of that goodness of God being greater than our fear, than anything that might go wrong, we'd be able to look ahead. It's not that we don't look at possible consequences or consider, oh, if I do this, that might not work out, or I should probably be mindful if I'm going in this direction to do this. It's not that we don't do that, but we do it with a sense of, I have this presence in and around me that can deal and help me navigate safely and well throughout my life through, through this situation. I like to go back with, when I'm engaged in that kind of worrying behavior or when I'm working with clients who can't seem to let that go. I like to use the analogy of when we're driving. If we're not Aunt Vera and we're not fixating on the cows out in the fields, but we're driving safely, we're not looking at our texts and being distracted in all the ways we can be distracted. What are we doing? We're looking ahead. We're looking around us. We're making adjustments as we see necessary to navigate safely to our destinations. We're not sitting there obsessing about, what if a meteor just comes down from the sky on my car? What if a deer runs right in front of my car at the last second? here in downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> We're not going to town with all these you know, wild scenarios. We're just being good stewards, accepting that there's a goodness in us that's there to make good of what's in front of us. There was a speaker I heard speaking at a um, meditation retreat years back who talked about, you know, he had had a very, very rich uh, spiritual practice for years. But he had an experience where he'd been critically injured in a car accident, and after the surgery, for some reason, they had to hold back on the pain medications uh, because they might actually prevent him from healing. And he talked about, with all that, those many years of rich spiritual practice, he said, I tell you, that went out the window for a while. He said, I was in pain. I was angry about what was happening to me. I was scared about what might happen to me. What if I didn't make it? What if I didn't heal properly and I'm disabled? All of those 
you know, negative thoughts that we can get in, into in situations like that. But he did. He did eventually get himself to focus on his breath. And he noticed that miracle of life that was still occurring within him with each breath. He started there. And then he realized, no matter how injured I am right now, there's still so much good happening in my physical body. So many of my organs are just functioning so well. And he started to focus on the doctors and nurses who had been working on him, feeling their dedication, their love, and how grateful he was for that. And then he noticed the, I can still feel grateful. In the middle of all this, I can feel grateful. I can feel love. He thought about all his loved ones that were trying to support him and how good he felt about that. And as he thought about how much love, how much goodness there was unfolding around him, he moved into this transcendent space, into this other state of consciousness. Now he said, and this is important, he said the pain was still there. The pain was still very much there, but it didn't have the grip on him. It wasn't his total experience at that time. And he said there was this peace that came over him that he knew no matter what, no matter what, even if he died, he'd be OK, because he could feel this part of him that was greater than his physical, physical experience. And obviously, since he was there at the meditation telling us about this, he did recover. His recovery was actually dramatic. And you know, he said, I know a lot of it was aided by that ability for me to just, when I felt that it was not my time to go, but to be open to healing, he said, I just put every thought about just this incredible intelligence in and around my body that was there to make me you know, whole, which it did. Metaphysician Emmett Fox tells us when we get you know, all caught up in thinking about our problems, he says, stop thinking about your difficulties and think about God instead. Now, what does that mean? God, 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 God. I mean, what, what does it really mean? I think it means exactly what we heard about. Think about the good. Think about the good. Inwardly, you know, we do our spiritual practices. That's why we do our meditation and prayer work. That's why we find readings that inspire us and remind us of the spiritual truth. If you don't have a practice like that, you know, our Science of Mind magazine every day has a little reading you can do with an affirmation. There's so many tools that are available to you to just remember the spiritual truth. You know, there was a student I filled in for Dr. Mark with the foundations class, a student who shared how much it helps her to just go back to our mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Turn our attention back there. And as we do that, I think it's important to really sense, like have a feeling of the love, have a feeling of the wholeness, a feeling of that essence of the divine that lives in us, because that's what really helps us to recognize that greater invisible power than the um, material things in the world that may be distracting us. And I think it's also important to take time to give thanks for all these aspects of God's nature in us. You know, be grateful periodically for your ability to love. No matter what, you could be in the worst situation, but you could think of someone you love and feel love, to feel joy, to be generous, to laugh. Those qualities are always there. And then outwardly take time to look at things that fill you with awe. Just, just look outside our sanctuary. Look at all that nature, that life force that's creating itself, shaping itself. Look at what happens when you, you ate something this morning and it's making a physical body. You're breathing and something's happening to rejuvenate your life. It's important for us to just keep putting our focus back to that sense of awe of God's greatness and majesty. You know, it's not about ignoring the problems and difficulties of the world. It's about remembering how much greater God's nature in and around us is. And that is what inspires us and motivates us to do something constructive, to feel like there's some greater power, some greater good I can bring to this, even if it's simply a prayer.
I would just say to you, if life is going well for you right now, wonderful. We love celebrating how, how God works in your life. And just know that there's an infinite, infinite reservoir of good that you can continue to tap into to continue to experience good going forward. And if, if you're facing challenges right now, please know, please know there's so much more good in you. There's so much more good around you that will help you to find the way to make good of this situation. And we, the ministers, the practitioners, our community as a whole, are here to help you remember that. We're here to help each other remember that. Let's pray. Thank you. Thank you. So as we turn our attention inward, I just give Give my awareness right here, right now, to that presence that every moment just seeks to experience goodness, wholeness, joy, love, abundance, and to recognize that as the, the nature of that one life, the life of God, that is goodness in every way it can be known, felt, and realized, that is forever impelling itself into creation, living in, through, and around all that is, that each and every one of us is filled and surrounded by that nature of God. And knowing this, I speak my word, knowing that if there is any tendency for us to focus on what is wrong, there's this part of us that has awakened and said, wait a minute, no, wait. There is always a good to be revealed. There's some greater good in every situation we encounter here on earth to be revealed. And that we now begin to focus more on that presence of absolute love and wholeness and goodness that lives in all things. And as such, we become the vessels through which that greater knowingness of this truth ripples out and touches others. I know we are absolutely blessed by coming together as a community day today. I let this prayer be a prayer for our loved ones, for situations in the world that may be calling to our attention, and just knowing that wherever there's any challenge, any pain, any suffering, we know right now God is there. God is revealing itself as a greater good to be revealed from that situation. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams all paths to God, and with a full and grateful heart, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. Amen.